Moving on, this is the motor homunculus. So, as we are able to see, this is the motor cortex which is situated in the precental gyrus and this is where the story begins. So, this motor cortex situated in the precentral gyrus in the frontal lobe. So, this is the site of origin of the motor pathway. So, the corticospinal tract originates from this place. So, as we are able to see, this is the motor homunculus and there are specific sites in the precentral gyrus in the motor cortex which are responsible for the uh, motor outputs of the various parts of our body. So, as you are able to see, a large portion of the motor homunculus uh, subserves the face. So, a large portion of the motor cortex actually serves the muscles of facial expression. Then you have a portion which subserves the movements of the tongue. Then as you approach more towards the center, so laterally is the tongue in the face and as you approach towards the vertex, you find that lot of space is given for the hand and for the thumb and then the upper limb and then the lower limb. So, in a reverse manner. So, you have from below upwards, you have the face, the upper limb and the lower limb going on from lateral to medial in that order. So, here we are able to see as we saw earlier from the motor cortex situated in the precentral gyrus, our motor pathway begins. So, from the precentral gyrus, you have these fibers which originate, which travel through the subcortical region, then travels through the internal capsule. So, it most of the fibers travel through the anterior two-thirds of the posterior limb of the internal capsule. So, that is what contains the corticospinal tract and then it travels through the crust cerebri in the midbrain and then travels through the pons and then finally reaches the medulla. So, until then you are able to see there is no crossing. So, from the cortex, subcortex, internal capsule, midbrain, pons, until that point no crossing. And then finally, in the medulla, you are able to see that is where the crossing happens to the opposites. So, in the medulla, there is at the level of the pyramidal decussation, the crossing over of the corticospinal tracts happens. And then they descend down as the corticospinal tract in the spinal cord. Now, this corticospinal tract, 90% of the fibers, they actually cross and they become the lateral corticospinal tract. 10% of the fibers, they do not cross and they form the uncrossed anterior corticospinal tract. Now, the fibers in the corticospinal tract, they are responsible for the motor output of the body. Therefore, through the spinal cord, they travel and uh, you have the dorsal root and the ventral root. The ventral root is the motor root and uh, the dorsal root and the motor root, they join together to form the nerve. So, the motor fibers, they travel through the motor root into the peripheral nerve and through the peripheral nerve, it finally reaches the neuromuscular junction and finally, the muscle is innervated. So, that is the motor pathway. So, as we are able to see, you have the motor cortex in the precentral gyrus. The next stop is that you should remember is the internal capsule, the anterior two-thirds of the posterior limb of the internal capsule. The next stop for the motor pathway is the crust cerebri in the midbrain and then it travels through the pons and also through the medulla and finally the decussation happens at the level of the medulla oblongata. So, that is the pyramidal decussation. So, decussation or crossing over at the medulla and crossing over 90% they cross over to the opposite side to become the lateral corticospinal tract in the spinal cord. 10% however, they are going to be uncrossed and they are going to contribute to the anterior corticospinal tract in the spine. From the spinal cord what happens? You have the anterior horn cells. These anterior horn cells are going to give rise to the motor root that is going to give rise to the nerve. Then the motor output is communicated to the neuromuscular junction which finally innervates the muscle and that is how the orders are carried through from the motor cortex all the way to the muscle. So, this is your motor path. Now, in the same way, there is a sensory pathway which happens in the reverse direction. So, the motor pathway happens from above below all the way 
from the motor cortex to the muscle. The sensory pathway happens in the reverse direction from the sensory receptors all the way to the sensory cortex which is situated in the post central guide. So, this is the sensory homunculus as you are able to see lot of it is actually closely similar to the motor homunculus and as you are able to see a lot is going to be subserving the face and the mouth and the tongue followed by the hand and the uh, thumb and then a very minimal portion for the intra organs and for the lower limb. 